Before we get started, I just wanted to let you guys know that the Ultimate Game Sale is currently happening on Xbox through to the end of July. I went ahead on my subreddit and posted the easiest games from the sale that are up to 80% off. Feel free to check out the link in the description if you'd like more info on those games. Maka's Guides. <laughs> Hey guys, Maka here with another 100% full game walkthrough. This video is for the game called The Moose Man, available starting mid-July 2018. It does offer a full 1,000 gamer score as well as a platinum trophy for those playing on PlayStation. This game is made or published by Sometimes You, the brilliant developers that brought us games like Energy Cycle and North and One-Eyed Cook, which I have also covered on the channel. As you can tell by the length of the video, that is how long it will take us to get our 1,000 gamer score or our Platinum Trophy. I will be doing this game in one long take, including all of the loading screens and all of the uh, small little cutscenes, as you can see on screen right now, between chapters. Uh, it's going to be roughly about an hour long game, maybe an hour and a few minutes. So in this game, there are a total of, let's quickly check, there are a total of 15 achievements or trophies, 16 trophies if you count the platinum. Most of them are going to be for either just completing the game, for doing certain tasks in the game, or for grabbing all 52 of the collectibles. Now this is a side-scrolling game, you move left to right from the very beginning of the game, you want to move left and this is an artifact. We'll be finding 52 of these, and these are the collectibles. At any point in the game, you can press the left bumper in order to look through your artifacts to make sure you have all of them. Now we can start moving to the right-hand side. I'll obviously be doing periodic checks to make sure that you are keeping up, as this game does not have any achievement tracking of any kind. Once you reach this tree here, you'll press the A button. It'll kind of spawn this, um, you know, ghost world. And you'll also unlock a collectible, although this one won't actually show up on your screen unless you look at the uh, journal, but we'll do that later. Uh, also, for a lot of the collectibles, there is a small chime you'll hear in the background. Now, what you'll do is you'll go to these fellas right here at the campfire, and we are going to use our D-pad to input the following. Right, 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 left, left, left. So again, that's right, 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 left, left, left. You'll hear the chime, and you can continue forward. So that's right to the, you know, go to the right four times, go to the left three times, and the artifact should drop down. You'll hear the chime I was talking about, and we can move on. The way this game works is it is a side-scrolling game, but you also have the ability to kind of shift through worlds. So you'll notice that there's uh, all these kind of white things on the screen, um, and they're kind of in one dimension. If I press the A button, those will disappear, and then I'll be in the real dimension. So you kind of have to go through between these dimensions uh, to make it through. You can also double tap right on the D-pad in order to automatically walk. And this, for example, will have to kind of switch through dimensions to pass through certain objects. Uh, and that's kind of the main mechanic of the game. The game's actually, out of all the Sometimes You games, it's probably one of the better ones. We'll have to make the bridge and go on the bridge. You'll notice that there is a fish. We'll try to get right over the fish. And as the fish jumps, we're going to press A to fall through it. We'll end up in this dimension with a cow. We'll grab an achievement for doing so. We'll walk forward and then grab this collectible artifact right here. And then we'll continue walking forward to the right. We can now cross the bridge as normal. So here there is a small little thing we have to sneak by. You'll automatically crouch when you stop moving, uh, but it does take about a second for you to crouch. So we're going to sneak forward, 
And then as we believe that the cat will kind of open his eyes, we're going to stop moving and crouch. As soon as it kind of closes its eyes, we can start walking forward. If timed correctly, you can do this all in one run. But it's a little bit tricky, so we're going to do it kind of in two. It, as soon as he closes his eyes from here, you should be able to make a break for the end here. There's going to be a bunch of obstacles now in our way, and the cat thing will start chasing us. We're going to have to switch between dimensions in order to make it through the area before he catches us. So whenever you have something kind of impeding your progress, just switch dimensions. At this point, you can uh, also just kind of fall off the side. Once you fall off the side, you want to go to the left. You might have to switch between dimensions in order to kind of get in this little cave here. But you should be at five artifacts. And you can press the left bumper to see that. You can also walk forward right here, and we will get an achievement for progress called Claws of Osh. And here you'll notice this kind of rock. This rock will follow us if we're in the ghost dimension. We'll just want to stand all the way on the right until the rock aligns with the log on the top there. Once they seem to align, should be able to pass through the rock now and then use it in order to go up. Here we'll switch in order to allow the log to roll down the hill until it creates a bridge for us. And then we can uh, solidify it in the normal dimension in order to cross. Right here, we want to switch dimensions and we can pass through the ramp that we use to come down and go kind of behind and into this rock to find our sixth artifact. Alright, so this is a little bit of an interesting area, but you can pass through the ghost guys as long as you are in the kind of normal dimension for the most part. There's a couple tricks, but you have to kind of time um, their little strikes to make sure they don't get you. And the best thing to do pretty much here is to just kind of uh, go into the ghost dimension whenever possible. And uh, you'll, you'll be able to pass through these guys. It's occasionally they'll lunge at you. But you should be able to kind of just slowly pass through them. Take your time. Um, and switch whenever it seems like it's the right thing to do. If you're in the ghost dimension and they don't have red eyes, you should be able to just walk right through them. You will align the log, and then you'll have to cross this little area. If at any point you see one of them that is, like, walking towards you with red eyes, they will lunge at you and, and whatnot. So, the next thing we'll do is grab the artifact inside this rock. We should now be at 7. And then we can pull this rock forward with us. And we will have some enemies in front of us here. All these enemies can attack you, so the only way to uh, not get attacked by them is to go inside of the rock and solidify it in order to allow them to pass over. As soon as they pass over, you should be able to switch back and continue forward into the smoke cloud thing. 
there's sometimes a second wave of enemies, so you'll want to be careful just in case they do spawn on you. And at this point, you'll go to the next chapter. There'll be a small little cutscene, as you can see on screen here. You can change this to English, by the way, but the English version doesn't have any um, uh, voiceover. It's just text. Uh, it, is a, it is in Russian, and I believe this game was kind of made to be played in Russian. As soon as we spawn into this next chapter, we'll unlock an achievement or trophy called Lower World, and we can walk left in order to find artifact number eight. All right, now the next couple of artifacts are quite tricky and all puzzle-based. So we're going to walk a little bit to the right, and we'll notice this tree. And on the tree is a solution to our puzzle. We have to walk to the right without a mask, continue walking to the right with a mask, turn left with the mask, and then continue left without the mask. Uh, it can be quite difficult for the game to kind of trigger that you're doing it right. So just kind of wiggle yourself back and forth. You'll have to be quite quick on it, and eventually it will fall from the sky. As you can see, I kind of just spammed it until it worked. That one's really tricky to get right. You got to do it really, really fast. So just go as fast as possible, and it should eventually drop. Now we can continue forward. Make sure you uh, press the push pad to open the little door. And then continue a little bit forward here. A lot of the artifacts from here on out are going to be very kind of riddle and puzzle focused. And some of them are quite tricky to get to unlock. Uh, I'll do my best to absolutely give you like, you know, all the reasons you'll need to succeed. All the little tips and tricks you'll need. Here we'll want to turn on our mask to get the little cinematic of the kind of soldier, the big, the big dude here. And we can kind of walk past. You'll see these push plates, they only appear when you don't have your mask, so go past the first one by using your mask. Activate the middle plate, then the left plate, and then the right plate to open up the passage. Now for the next artifact, put your mask on and you'll see the hieroglyphic at the top showing you the uh, order of moving. Right, left, right, left, right, right, right. And if you do that correctly, it should fall from the sky as you see on screen. It might take a little bit of uh, practice to make sure the game's kind of tracking your things perfectly, but with your mask on, input right, left, right, left, right, 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 and the artifact will continue. The next artifact is on this bridge right here. We'll have our mask on, and the order of the characters on the bridge is the solution itself. So as you can see, the characters making up the bridge are right, left, right, left, right, left, right. We'll do that again. And it will spawn. Sometimes you gotta be really quick. Sometimes it's the timing that matters. Sometimes it's just the input. But if done correctly, you'll grab the artifact and continue forward. This one can be quite tricky, but it's all based on music. So what you'll do is you'll uh, come to these three crystals here on my right hand side. They'll play a melody. What you want to do is take your mask off and see which uh, crystal glows blue. So we'll see the middle one just glowed blue. We'll take our mask off, go to it and turn it on. The next one to turn blue was the left one. We'll turn our mask off and turn it on. Then we want to go to the all the way to the right and just follow the pattern, making sure you only turn your mask on on the next blue crystal. We're basically creating a small melody here, a jingle of sorts. If done correctly, you'll unlock another artifact and you'll also unlock the achievement called Riddles of the Dark. Not sure why it didn't unlock on screen for me just there actually, to be honest. But we'll continue forward. Cross the bridge. You'll see the artifact near the bottom of the screen right now. Near Nearing the end of the bridge, you want to switch to your mask to drop down. This will get you to the artifact. 
And then we can continue forward. Keep your mask on and use this skeleton as a bridge to go up. And then we have to pull this rock a little bit with us to the left here. Once they are close to each other, we can switch and drop under and go to the right hand side. At the end of this tunnel, we should find our 14th artifact. Let's just double check. That is 14, so we can now continue. We can now pull the rock all the way to the right with us here. With our mask on, obviously. Once uh, it touches the little cliff, we will pass through it in order to use the rock to get up top. Without the mask now, obviously. We'll go all the way to the checkpoint here. Put our mask back on and you'll see a small bridge that leads to the left now, which you'll want to take. It'll take you into a secret cave where we'll collect our 15th artifact. We can now continue forward to the right. And go down this hill, but don't jump off at the end. Once you do reach the end, just stand there and wait for about three to five seconds. So I'm at the end and I'm going to wait. One, two, three. And the artifact will appear. Now you can jump down into it in order to proceed the story a little bit. All right, so at the very beginning of this kind of chapter, I guess, by the way, you can chapter select all of this at any point if you miss something or if there's a puzzle you don't understand, you want to try it again or whatever. Uh, all of There's a lot of different chapters you can select, but from the very beginning of this area, go left and find the artifact and then start pulling the rock uh, with you uh, with your mask on in order to bring it onto this kind of push pad here. Um... And once it activates it, you can walk on through. Now, the game actually gets quite a bit easier for a little bit. And then it gets back to the kind of tough riddles. But uh, we'll put our mask on. And there will be these two kind of crab creatures. And we'll have to use them to put them on switches. Uh, you'll see it all happen on screen. There's nothing crazy happening. Uh, for the next 10 minutes or so, the game is uh, just about as easy as it gets. And then it kind of gets difficult again. So uh, turn your mask off to walk past these kind of crab creatures and then pull one and only one of them with you and put them on the further of the two uh, available switches here. You can't get too far ahead of them or they will stop following you, so keep that in mind. Once he's on the switch, turn him to stone by taking your mask off and now go and get the other crab creature. And make sure you don't accidentally move the first one, or else you may kind of find yourself in a little bit of a sticky situation. No matter what happens, you should be able to kind of save yourself, but it's just easier to do them separately than it is to bring them together and then try to separate them after. Bring them and then put him on the switch, turn off your mask, and you are free to now move on. Next is a little bit of a riddle here. We'll go past this checkpoint, put our mask on, and you'll see directions directly above me using the handprints in the line. Left, right, right, left, right, left, right. 
If done correctly, you'll hear the artifact jingle and see the artifact drop from the sky. Again, that's left, right, right, left, right, left, right. And that's in the handprints kind of above me um, in the row there. Next, we'll grab an artifact here, right in the middle. This is kind of automatic as part of the story. All right, now what you have to do in order to solve these pu this puzzle here is you have to generate the face that is kind of above the circle. So we're gonna start with the middle piece to align the eyes. We're going to see that the mouth is aligned and that's gonna be on the very right hand side. And then on the very left hand side, we will align the outer ring in order to match it up and let it keep spinning until it's just right. And we gotta, we gotta do a little bit of kind of planning here. Make sure we spin the far right and then we'll spin the far left again. But essentially, you're just trying to create the face that is um, above the uh, diagram here. Could take you a couple tries, but once everything's aligned, it should uh, kind of glow bright white, and then this should happen. If done correctly, you can actually do it very, very, very quickly. But um, yeah. Anyways, walk to the walk to the middle here and press A in order to kind of proceed. But if done correctly, you can kind of do that within uh, two seconds. But if you get everything kind of out of order, it's definitely better to know the solution. We're going to now go into this kind of bow shooting section where we can press A to shoot a bow. And this section is really, really easy. But there are a couple of well-hidden artifacts that you definitely want to pay attention to. Alright, so the mechanic itself is pretty easy. What you would do is you would hold A to draw the bow, let go of A to shoot the bow. Before we proceed, we we'll want to go left and make sure we grab the artifact. This should be number 20. If you want to do a quick check, LB, you should have a full first page. And you should have two on your second page. For the most part, we just proceed to the right uh, for the next couple minutes and shoot any enemies that kind of, uh, you know, get in our way. There are some pretty well hidden artifacts though, so like I was alluding, alluding to earlier, um, you know, after we get the little bit of a scene change, there's another one to our left. It'll be a, in the snake in the shape of a snake. We at 21 now. We can now proceed to the right. We'll see a wolf. We will have to draw our bow and kill the wolf. Uh, we'll actually have to shoot to the right there. The wolf will pretty much die, you know very easily. I don't know if he can actually attack you unless you get way too close to him anyways, though. You can now walk up the rock and there's a couple of like small little puzzle things kind of coming up, but none of them are, are hard by any means. We'll walk up to here and we want to shoot the bird on the rock. Shooting that bird or turkey will kill it and create a artifact for us to pick up. Once we reach this open chasm, shoot down the log in order to create a bridge for us to cross. Now, once you cross the bridge, there is a wolf near this tent. Make sure you keep your distance and shoot the wolf so that he doesn't attack you. He is currently off screen for me, but uh, you can shoot a pretty fair distance in this game. So make sure you take him out or he will get you. 
and then just continue forward and to the right. You reach this small little lip where you will jump off. There's a secret room to the left, so make sure you walk into that and pick up the ar artifact here. And now we can continue to the right. There should be another wolf right around here. He kind of wanders back and forth. So obviously make sure you don't let him take you out. And now proceed to the right. You'll spawn in the next scene. Just again, proceed to the right. This one doesn't have a hidden artifact on the left. You will need to take out your bow and take out the moose though. You'll now have a small cutscene and will spawn in a desert area. The desert area seems like there's only like one thing to do, but there's actually two very tricky artifacts here we'll want to grab first. So proceed to the right and go past the altar in the middle that has the button prompt. You do not want to hit this prompt until later. If you do hit the prompt accidentally, feel free to just back out to the main menu. And then uh, you can chapter select and scene select this specific scene. So we'll be walking past this little altar right here. And all the way on the far right hand side, there is a artifact. It should be number 24. All the artifacts you, you're picking up so far have been in order, but the next couple ones will be a little bit out of order. Um, we'll get to that when we get to that, though. So pick up this artifact on the far, far right. And now go back into the left. As you approach, you are going to want to draw your bow at full strength and shoot this pillar in front of me. Doing so will spawn an artifact above it, so stand under it, and it will drop and you'll pick it up. After doing that, you can proceed to this hill and interact with it in order to unlock an achievement or trophy called Shandi for interacting with the Shimmering Sun. You now have a new ability where you can put light into your staff by pressing the B button or the circle button on PlayStation, and this will ward off certain types of enemies and protect you from them. You don't need to be protected from them, but it will protect you in case you do need it. So if you're about to get hit by an enemy like this, you can press B to shine your light, and it will create a shield around you that will protect you from them. However, getting hit by something and triggering your shield will bring your light away from you. So every time you get hit, you'll need to put your light back up if you want to keep that shield. And the shield only remains on for a certain amount of time. So you definitely kind of have to time the enemy attacks and make sure that you have enough time to react and use your staff again if you want to get hit by multiple enemies, for example. And we'll be doing that coming up here. Now we'll want to cross this uh, checkpoint with our mask on, obviously. For these next enemies, you can either just time it so that you walk under them as they are highest in the sky, or feel free to use your Shandi light in order to protect yourself. I'd probably recommend that you just get good with the timing, though, as uh, it's a lot more difficult trying to protect yourself from them than it is to just kind of time it properly. Nonetheless, I seem to be doing it the hard way. Now, as you walk forward here, you want to put your mask on and you'll kind of wake up this giant beast. Just tap through the scenes and then press A and continue forward here to the right. At this point, we'll see an artifact up and to the right. However, we're going to do them out of order here. 
So you can count along with me, but um, they will be kind of showing up out of order inside of your artifact uh, booklet thing. We'll walk forward. Put our mask on. Watch out for the creatures. And once on this bridge, stand near the eye of the beast and press, uh, take your mask off to drop down under him and then go left in order to collect this artifact. Now we can come back out of the hole and go to the right hand side towards this checkpoint. From this checkpoint, there's a long series of kind of things we need to do, but put your mask off and you should be able to climb a branch to your left. Watch out for all of these enemies here. They can get quite, you know, they get quite aggressive and you'll want to continue forward and to the left. We want to then grab this artifact and with our mask off, grab the next artifact down here as well. All right, so this next part can be quite tricky. We have to make our way to the right. Chances are you'll get hit by one of these red guys that are kind of circling around here. If you do, that's completely fine. You'll go back to the checkpoint, and then you will uh, just climb back up and go to the right. There's also these three circling dudes. They can be a little bit tough. If you, I would recommend trying to take them out one by one. So just kind of slowly creep in, let them try to attack you, and take them out one by one. Grab the artifact, and you can now proceed. You'll now drop down. Back to the checkpoint we were—we were. We were uh, I was—I was talking about a little bit earlier. We'll want to go through the tree under here. Watch out on this enemy here, here. And this part's a little bit tough, but the the clue is in the middle. We want to stand to the right here and put our mask on. And then go to the left, stand right here, and just tap your light on and off as much as possible. If done correctly, you will hear the chime. So there, we actually got it there. And once you do that, you can drop down by putting your mask on. It'll get you underneath the little barrier that we wouldn't have been able to get unless we did that little trick. Grab the artifact and continue left. Doing so all the way to the end of this room will get us the Secrets of the Bone achievement or trophy. You want to do a quick count of collectibles. We should have all 18 on the first page. Going to the next page, we should have... Uh, the pattern as follows. Now you want to go back to the left here a little bit. And back to the checkpoint and go up above to the right. Watch out for the little enemies. You will have to use your shield to protect yourself. And then we will need to kind of push this log by putting our mask on. And uh, it'll kind of be magnetized away from us. Keep pushing it until it drops down and then drop down with it. And then keep pushing it uh, in order for it to uh, be in the gap there. Once it covers the gap, take your mask off. And then protect yourself against the two enemy types, or the two enemies. And we can now cross. Just keep walking to the right to not be killed by anything. And once you reach this area, you'll go to the next chapter. Okay, so for this little chapter, there's a spider of sorts. And uh, all you'll want to do is turn on your Shandi and put your mask on. And if you do ever get hit, make sure you put your Shandi back on to protect yourself 
from any future hits. When you reach this point, you'll see a bridge. Cross the first bridge. Make sure you protect yourself. And then go to the second bridge. Make sure you protect yourself. And then drop down through the second bridge in order to find a secret area as well as an artifact. Go to the right to pick it up. And uh, there's also like this fetus thing in here. Uh, you can take a look at it, but just leave once you're ready. Now, as we continue, uh, just do the same thing. Protect yourself. Make sure you use your mask to get across. And eventually, you will reach this section here. You'll just continue forward. And, uh, yeah, keep going. Alright, so once you spawn here, uh, this is basically the boss battle. There is an artifact all the way to the left. So, we're gonna go grab that right now. I'm gonna show you where I am on the screen if you can't see me, just in case. Go all the way to the left, past the screen, and you'll pick up an artifact. So make sure you picked it up. It'll show in the top left corner that you picked it up. Now what we need to do is we need to defeat the boss by activating the three switches uh, in the proper order. So protect yourself whenever you protect yourself whenever you need to. Unfortunately, I died. We're going to activate the first switch here. We're going to skip the second switch. We're going to go all the way to the right. Activate the tree switch and then go back to the middle and activate the middle switch and that'll defeat the spider boss quite quickly There is a lot of um, you know, you got to make sure that uh, shield is always up and there is a lot of alternating between mask on mask off so make sure a uh, For those who get that reference leave a comment um, But nonetheless, uh, it's not a hard boss battle You just got to make sure to do the three switches in a row and uh, if you do get hit you just kind of respawn as soon as you do finish the boss battle and you go to the next scene, make sure you walk left in order to pick up what should be our 34th artifact right here. And then we can proceed to the right for a fair while. Uh, about one or two minutes of walking to the right and nothing will actually really happen. We will reach an area where we kind of go underwater and uh, I'll rejoin you back with my commentary once we get to that section. But for the next minute or two, just walk to the right. You can leave your mask on or off. You can have your light on or off. I think. I haven't, like, tested it extensively. But I'm just going to leave my mask off, my light off, for now until I get to where I'm going. This is a fair warning, the next section is one of my least favorite in the game. But as you approach this area, you should notice a very obvious artifact in front of you, which you pretty much cannot miss. And then we will enter the water in front of us. Whenever I'm in the water, I do put my Shandi on, just so that you guys can kind of see where I am a little bit better on the video. As you proceed forward, though, it will uh, change the scenes for you, and you will spawn in this cave. Now, there's an artifact all the way to the left as soon as you spawn, and there's a very little tricky button combination that we're going to try to do right here. The button combination is as follows. You want to start with your mask off and your light off. You are going to turn your mask on, turn your light on, and then double tap to the left as quickly as you can. I found that mashing the buttons tended to actually be more successful for me than just pressing them. So here we go.
It's uh, it's it's not very accurate, but just keep pressing it, and it will eventually drop an artifact. So as you can see there, I I just kind of kept going. I kept button mashing. It eventually dropped. Honestly, this one's probably one of the least consistent ones in the game in terms of button combinations. So again, you're going to turn your mask on and your light on while looking to the right and then try to turn around and run to the left. Um, button mashing seems to have worked better for me, honestly, than um, actually attempting to play. Now, this is easily my least favorite part of the game. This is the River God part. Uh, we'll walk forward a little bit here and we'll pick up the obvious artifact. And then we will continue forward. You'll notice that when your mask is on, these logs in front of us will be rotating. They will stop rotating when your mask is off. Keep that in mind. What you want to basically do or get used to doing is using these logs as protection kind of above you. There will be a monster that swims around. And if his light shines on you, he will capture you. However, the mechanics are pretty rough in my opinion. So, it might take a little bit of trial and error as we go here. You'll notice that the river god uh, appears in front of us right here. He has a light, and that light kind of shines uh, downward, and he has certain patterns. We have to try to get from left to right while not getting captured by him. So, there's like, you know, there's definitely a certain way to do it, but uh, it's a little bit tricky for sure to get the uh, perfect kind of timing down. The first log you can see right here is protecting me completely. And as I can actually make it across without the light shining, I will do so. The next logs I'll have to rotate a little bit in order to get the kind of proper angle here of protection. It's also a fair bit of timing and as you saw, unfortunately for some reason the game decided I didn't do it properly. That would, that would be the one thing I would say about this mechanic is that it's almost impossible to like figure out exactly what you're doing wrong whenever the monster does catch you. He will swim back and I will just continue to the right to get to my next checkpoint. This next uphill section can be quite difficult but with a little bit of practice isn't too terrible. Just from the beginning go to the right as much as possible. If he does capture you, uh, just go back to the checkpoint and immediately start walking to the right. Use the logs to protect yourself as well as possible here. And unfortunately, I didn't do so. But that's fine. We'll restart the checkpoint. And uh, now that we have a little bit of a setup, hopefully we can get pretty far. And if done correctly, you will eventually make it to the end. Might take you a couple more tries than it took me, but that's okay if it does. You will unlock an achievement or trophy as well for completing it. Now, in this area, you'll spawn in the water. I just turned on my Shandy so you can see where I am. I'm kind of in the middle uh, left there. And walk to the left. There is an artifact under the water here on the left, so make sure you grab that. We're at 39 out of 52. We can now walk out of the water and towards this rabbit. Now, right here, there is a musical puzzle of sorts, but it's actually more of a Simon Says puzzle, to be completely honest. Walk up to these masks, and if you activate your mask right here, for example, it'll give you a pattern. So the pattern was one, two. So we're going to repeat that pattern. Turn our mask on at one. Turn our mask on at two. Now we're going to get the second instance of the pattern. One, two, three. So we're going to redo that. So on the mat, on the first one, we're going to turn our mask on to activate it. Off to leave. Two. And three. 
The next instance of the puzzle. One, two, three, one. We're going to input that. One, two, three, and one. Now it should replay one, two, three, one, and it should spawn the artifact above. Also unlocking an achievement or trophy specific to this artifact. We can now walk forward. Make sure you have your Shandi on so that uh, you can protect yourself against this guy right here. And here is another really terrible button input combination coming right up. So what we'll do is we'll go to this rock and wait for the bird to fly by. Obviously using the rock for protection. And the button combination is as follows. You want to stay here on this rock with your mask on and your light on. And then turn both of them off and go underneath this hanging artifact right here. Input the following button combination. I will repeat it a few times. All right, here we go. <clears throat> it is right, light, right, mask, light, right, left, light, mask. And if done correctly, it should spawn the artifact. Again, that is right, light, right, mask, light, right, left, light, mask. So if you want, you can repeat that process. You can repeat that kind of voiceover. It's written on the tree in front of us, but it's pretty hard to see unless you kind of take a screenshot and like enhance it CSI style. So if you do that correctly, it will spawn that artifact and we can now continue forward. You'll notice these rabbits and uh, th also for the last puzzle, make sure that you're starting with both your mask and your light off. Uh, you'll notice these rabbits, turn your mask on and your light on. They will turn white and you will want to kind of push them forward. Pushing them forward, you'll see this owl right here that will try to eat the bunny, but the bunny will run away. So now we're gonna go. We're gonna go back and uh, make sure to grab as many of them as possible here. So there's one kind of behind us. We gotta have at least like four or five of them. So here's the second one. Here's the third one. There should be five, six of them. Okay. So we're gonna grab all six, even though we don't need all six, just to be safe. And we're going to push the rabbits all the way to the right-hand side towards the owl. The owl will eat them, and we'll grab our 41st out of 52 artifacts. Another small thing to take note of is that you don't want to get too close to the owl yourself, or the owl will actually eat you. So make sure you kind of keep a little bit of distance, just enough to get the rabbits towards him, but not so much that you're right next to him, you know what I mean? Once he flies away, he will leave an artifact behind, and we can continue forward. That should be number 41, I think. Yeah. We'll do a quick check in a second here. So we'll go across the water, making sure to protect ourselves from the enemy using our light. And at this point, we just continue walking forward and to the right for approximately 30 seconds to a minute uh, until we get a scene change. Enjoy the cool music and the quite nice looking visuals uh, while we do that, though.
Once you reach the light, it will trigger a change of scene. You will unlock an achievement or trophy for progress through the game. And you can also unlock an artifact. We'll let the uh, couple of words here play out. So again, as soon as we gain control of our character, achievement or trophy for progress, walk to the left and get artifact number 42 of 52. All right, at this point, we can proceed to the right. And we're in the home stretch of the game. We'll walk forward and see this kind of uh, fireplace tent thing. And we'll see this bug that attaches to ourselves and every 5 to 10 seconds, he will reverse our controls. So if you start walking the wrong way, just alternate your controls basically until you get to where you want to go. It sounds a lot more difficult than it is, but basically, uh, whenever he reverses you, just, you know, figure it out. And then these guys will kill him. And now there is an artifact. And you'll see the positions of the spears are left, left, left. That's left, 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 right, right, right. So we're going to input that left, 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 right, right, right. And for some reason it didn't work. Eventually it'll work. Sometimes it just decides not to work. Uh, I found that using the D-pad is more consistent than using the analog stick. But after you do left, 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 right, 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 that's four lefts and three rights. You should get uh, the artifact from the spearmen. And we can walk forward and there will be another achievement here we can grab called healer for defeating the witch to defeat the witch you will crawl into this kind of cellar with your mask and light on in order to try to attract her to attack you once she does you have to kind of escape and then turn it back on and off to kind of lure her back and you're going to be taking her out of the cellar but make sure you take your mask and light off if she gets too close as she will kill you so lead her back towards these kind of warrior dudes who will kill her. Uh, that'll grab you the achievement or trophy as well as an artifact from her body. Continue to the right, obviously, for a fair bit of time here. The music's actually pretty good in this game. I would say it's one of the uh, best parts of it. This game's actually significantly better than a lot of the games that sometimes you does publish. Um, I mean, it's not like a fantastic, amazing game you must play or anything, but it's pretty good. All right, so we'll come to the top of the hill with these seven kind of poles. Walk past them to find the artifact. Once we've grabbed the artifact, interact with the middle pole, and you'll have um, you'll have a seven or like all the totems will go off in a specific order. You have to memorize that order, or just follow the video. So the order is as follows: We'll grab the middle one with the light, the second one from the left, the second one from the right, the one uh, to the left of it. Then we go all the way to the left. We're activating these with the light, by the way. Then the one on the left that remains, and then the one on the far right that remains. When done correctly, it should do the song and call a bird over, and then you can hop on that bird. And I bet you didn't see this coming. A bird section. A side-scrolling bird escape level all right <laughs> so well i'm not going to achieve a trophy for getting to a certain area here and we'll want to grab the artifact which is kind of directly above us from where we spawn you'll notice these red clouds the red clouds do harm you 
you will need to maneuver your way into this canal. And it is a little bit difficult, but at the end, you will find an artifact. And you can try to maneuver your way out, or you can just die to the clouds. Up to you. And what we want to do is kind of fly pretty low to the ground for, for this next couple, this next little section. As we fly low to the ground, we should notice this flying bird artifact right here. It can be a little bit hard to see as it does go behind the clouds. And then from this bird artifact, we want to go directly up. And we'll find another artifact kind of flying around in the clouds, which is also going to be somewhat difficult to see as it pokes in and out of the clouds a little bit. Any time now. There it is. So once you grab that one, you are now free to move to the right and downward. And you'll notice this last little bird flying around here, which is an artifact. Make sure you pick that up. And now interact with this man in order to proceed. And now you can just uh, obviously pick up the giant artifact as well that he leaves behind on his hand. At this point, you're ready to basically go to the right, and there's like a small escape section. The escape section is generally very easy. The only hard part about it is the fact that there's artifacts littered around. I would highly recommend that you follow my path exactly. I will be narrating it as I do it. It's it's not difficult by any means, but if you try to do it a different way, you will uh, find it a lot more difficult in my opinion. You do have to actually pick up the artifacts and complete the section, so keep that in mind. Now, the red is the clouds you're trying to avoid. So we're gonna avoid the first cloud, which will show up near the bottom. going to avoid the second cloud We're going to avoid the third cloud before the fourth cloud there's an artifact so fly straight into the red and dodge the cloud now after dodging four you want to try to dodge five even though there is an artifact and pick up the fifth after the cloud continue flying that fifth cloud if you don't dodge first and then pick it up you end up too far on the left of the screen and you end up getting uh, killed by the boss once you reach this part you can kind of fly up and into the clouds here you should unlock uh, an achievement or trophy for progression called rug life rug ride never mind and it should fade to white and give you a little bit of story so again, if you do fail during that like escape section, I got lucky, actually did it on my first try this time. Um, you will get put all the way to the very beginning, and you will need to re-grab all the artifacts there, so keep that in mind. Now, if everything, if you've done everything correctly at this point in the game, you should, let's do a quick like achievement check and a quick artifact check. You should only have two achievements left and in terms of your artifact collection your first page should obviously be full your second page should be full and your third page should have one artifact missing in the top right hand corner at this point we basically just proceed to the right um, there is one more artifact to grab. There is, uh, like one more kind of puzzle thing, although it's pretty obvious what you're supposed to do. And then there is a three to five minute outro cinematic. And we are, uh, yeah, we're basically done the game. We have less than five minutes to go. The music and audio in this section is actually pretty good too, so if you wanna, wanna pay attention to that, I would, uh, I would recommend it.
Nonetheless, guys, I'd like to thank you for uh, taking the time with me today to go through the Moose Man. I hope I help you get to your 1,000 gamer score or your platinum trophy. I hope the video was helpful, as helpful as possible, and that there weren't too many places you got stuck in. I hope the game didn't glitch on you or anything as well. If the video was helpful, I would highly appreciate a like on the video. Share the video with a friend. If you want to take your support above and beyond, you can support the channel financially through Patreon pledges. But that is completely optional. A link is in the description if you'd like to take a look at how that works. As you approach this final area, you will unlock your last artifact, uh, which is mandatory in the game. You'll go up to it, and with your mask and light on, we can now try to solve the final puzzle, which is to complete the face in the middle. Every time you approach the uh, poles, uh, it will start rotating things at a different speed. So what I would recommend is to try to align the mouth and the eyes first and then try to um, align everything else here. I would try to go from left to right, but uh, that's kind of up to, up to you and what you think is the best. So starting with the left, uh, starting with the right rather, sorry I got my uh, sides mixed up, I align the eyes and the mouth. And then I align the out outermost edge. It can be a little bit tricky to get everything to kind of sync up perfectly. But I would try to definitely recommend finishing the puzzle with the very left-hand side pole here. You also have to have it so that as it aligns, it's upright. So if you do have, if you find it that you are spinning it into the right location, but it's not locking in, as soon as it's in the proper location, you have to step off all of the poles. Uh, at this point in the game, you're going to walk to the right hand side and continue walking to the right hand side until the game basically finishes. We did unlock the achievement there for getting all the artifacts when we did pick up number 52 of 52. If for whatever reason you are missing an artifact, um, you should be able to go to your artifact page and locate the one that doesn't have, like, you know, isn't filled out in the chart. And you should be able to kind of go through the video and figure out which one you might be missing or which one you might have, I don't know, glitched on you or whatever. Uh, all 52 are located in this video. Uh, walked all the way to the right-hand side, to the tree, interact with it in order to finish the game. Uh, stay with the cinematic or the story kind of ending thing for about two or three minutes and that will unlock your final achievement which is called sunset uh, I'm not gonna let the video play out uh, actually I, I might we'll see uh, depending on the, how the music is and how YouTube copyright is uh, but nonetheless after the credits after the story uh, sunset achievement or trophy will unlock you should have everything done now uh, if you missed a miscellaneous achievement or trophy, there will be timestamps in the YouTube description so you can go back and chapter select your way through the game to find uh, what you might have missed. And again, thank you guys for watching. Shout out to pe people on Patreon for supporting the show. You guys help videos like this be possible because I can guarantee you not a lot of people are going to be playing the Moose Man <laughs> for gamer score or for, um, you know, trying to get all the achievements and, and whatnot. But, uh, you know. I enjoy what I do, and, and hopefully you guys find uh, a little bit of value in the videos or, or just have a good time overall trying some of these games out. This one's, I think, $7, which isn't too bad for what it is. And, uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you next time. Peace. Чапкам жребий века вайща. Ищи жим вон и шатык. Вилищ мунас. Бадмиров. Бетлэтни. Эм пом ваши ланпыдлы. Эм народ без ланпыдлы. Кыть зарян сочча парма. Пыч кымырын шон де сочча. Сыч и вармас морг. Туй великай. Бадлун ветлэта.